Can I have a motion to return to regular session? Roll call, please. Yes. Thompson, he's going to come down and help. Thank you. Thank you. Can we hear me now? Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, great. Good evening, everyone. I am here representing Denise Ribble. She signed up but realized she had to teach a class tonight. Um, so she gave me her written comments and asked me if I would read them for her. Thank you. Um, tonight, the superintendent is recommending the board create three new director positions 
in addition to the one that was added back at the last meeting. This brings the total to three positions more than those discussed at the budget meetings. The cost to the taxpayers of these three positions is $519,411. And if you include the questionable decision to add back the Director of Fine and Performing Arts, that is four director positions, costing the taxpayers $692,548. I am curious as to how the superintendent and his staff found this $519,411 after the budget discussions. I also question the board's priorities in bringing back the director of fine and performing arts. I think the board should vote no on these new positions. Instead, this money should be used to cover the cost of retaining all of the social workers in the district, $395,375, which then leaves $150,000 and change for additional classroom and other support personnel that directly support the children's education to be added back into the budget. Poughkeepsie schools have 46, and that Poughkeepsie City schools have 4,600 children enrolled. They employ five social workers. Wappinger's CSD, with a similar enrollment at Newburgh, employs seven social workers. Beacon, with 3,700 enrolled, employs five social workers. Albany School District services approximately 8,700 students and maintains 21 social workers. A brief check of the Cornwall website shows that they serve 3,400 students. It also shows that Cornwall has five social workers in their district. The other thing these districts have in common with each other is that they all have social workers billing for Medicaid reimbursable services. The Newburgh and Large City School District is the only district in the state of New York with more than 50 Medicaid eligible students that does not get reimbursed for these social work services. The estimated reimbursement for each student is $1,275 per year, totaling $395,250 that the district could get reimbursed for. Yet the superintendent staff claims the board to the board that they $395,250 is not cost effective. The New York and North City School District enrollment. 11,300 has almost three times as many students as Cornwall. Our students generally present with extremely complex issues that are further exacerbated by sometimes severe socioeconomic challenges. In addition to serving the students who are eligible for Medicaid reimbursement, social workers employed by the Newburgh School District provide Tier 3 or TI interventions, IEP services, crisis intervention, violence prevention, attendance, mediation, and referral services to all students. New York and Large City School District social workers are graduates of 60 credit master's programs, twice as many credits as some teaching, uh, some teaching programs. DSS workers, who you propose replacing them with, for the most part, are not graduates of master's programs. Many have only an associate's degree. The district feels that less social workers here than Cornwall or DSS workers will adequately service the needs of our students. This is discrimination and totally unfair to the students in our district and cannot be allowed to happen. Not one social worker position should be cut, not one. If the superintendent wants to add director level positions, this should be done after funding is obtained through grants and other sources not from the general fund, and not at the expense of our children. President, Please time. vote no on the new director positions. Vote yes to add supplemental amendment to retain social workers. Um, Thank you. Uh, you can turn the rest in uh, to the board clerk. Thank you. 
Mr. Porges, I'm actually um, going to do something that I don't normally do and ask you to speak to the director's positions, which are currently in the budget already, that has been adopted by this Board of Education, so it would not be an additional 600 and whatever the figure was that you gave. That would not be, we did not find that money between adopting the budget and now that money was already in the budget. If you could please explain those positions, Mr. Forget. Currently this year we have 10 directors positions. Uh, we have a director of the, we have a director of the LA Literacy, we have a director of social studies and foreign language, a director of science, a director of career and tech ed, a director of fine performing arts, a director of bilingual in the ESL, a director of physical education, health, and the athletic director as one position, a director of special education, and a director of RTI. That created that that is ten specific full-time positions. What we will have next year, as presented during the budget sessions, we will have um, an interdisciplinary curriculum director at the elementary level, an interdisciplinary curriculum director at the secondary level. So where we had four specific content directors, we will now have two general curriculum directors. Uh, so we, we went down two in that particular arena. The director of career and tech ed, as it's known today, will now become the director of career and career readiness. That is not a new position. It is what you're going to vote on this evening is a modification to the job description so that we are targeting and focusing on career readiness to prepare our students, not only for college, but also for career. The director of bilingual ESL for the district has been eliminated. That specific position no longer exists, and we will pick up those duties within curriculum and instruction. Uh, director of Fine and Performing Arts was put back in at the last session. Physical Ed, Health, uh, MEAD remains, and that's a requirement by the state. Uh, special Ed, is another position in RTI. So what the net is that you did agree on during the budget process was a reduction of two directors. Thank you very much, Mr. Forges, for that clarification. And while we're on clarifications, Dr. Murriega, would you give out the number of Medicare dollars that the district has received this year up to this point. Mm -hmm. We uh, just said that uh, we do not cash in with that money. Go ahead. Uh, this year, the district has received up to February of 2012, $138,000. Nowhere near 395 that was stated. Okay. Thank you. And we are eligible for more as it comes in until the remainder of this year. Until the end of June. And these are payments for the 2010 11 school year. Right. They're always a couple years behind. Thank you. And so we are getting those reimbursements. But yes, not we continue to the state. We will continue to receive additional reimbursements. Thank you, Dr. Maria. The next item on the agenda is from the board president. I have a resolution to appoint deputy clerks for the purpose of assisting the district clerk in conducting the school and library budget vote election on May 15, 2012. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints Carmen Babcock, Terry Buttrick, Gail Crawford, Renee George, Sylvia Glassy, Elaine Lee, Bertina Powell and Eileen Santucci to serve as deputy clerks for the purpose of assisting the district clerk in conducting the school and library budget vote election on May 15, 2012. Said deputy clerks shall be paid a stipend of $175 for service in this capacity for each vote and election. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. South Middle School renovation, Gans renovation, 
Hills Gate renovation, project set one and two, and Gardner Town renovation. Can I have a motion? <laughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Resolution B is to amend and extend an existing agreement with CSR to provide all services related to the repackaging, rebidding, and expanded construction administration services for the abatement and replacement of the boys' gym ceiling at the NFA North Campus. Can I have a motion? Second. 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 Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Item A is the recommendations from the committees on special education. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Item B is a resolution to approve facility use requests. From Cubs Cup Pack 327, Hudson Valley Touch and Fly Football League, Newburgh Elite Track Club, Newburgh and North City School District, Quick Strike Football Club, and Bales Gate PTO. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. Thank you, Ms. Prokash. Uh, in resolution, in item two, uh, the request had been to use Academy Field, and the organization has accepted to use Temple Hill Academy Field. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Item C is a resolution to approve and increase to a consultant agreement with Dr. Richard Hamm to provide psychiatric evaluations to particular students with disabilities and to provide professional development to staff members. Funding source, IDEA Part B, Section 611. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Item D is a resolution to approve and increase to a consultant agreement with Putnam Northern Westchester Bosies to provide professional development to staff members. Funding source is IDA Part B, Section 611. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Noriega. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. The first item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the Orange County Employment Training Administration for the Summer Youth Employment Program worksite contract. Funding source, 2012 Summer Youth Employment Program. Can I have a motion? <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. 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 consultant agreement with the three doctors to provide mentoring services to students 
and professional development to the program mentors at Kidney Avenue Magnet School and Newark Great Academy. The funding source is Extended Day School Violence Prevention Grant. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Roll call, please.
recycling that we, we have discussed before. Yeah. Um, because we just had a whole list, I don't know if the other people got, I got a whole list of prices and so forth that, that they pay. Um, so before we actually get rid of things, let's see if we can stimulate any money from, from these obsolete things. Yes, would you like to speak to that? Because I know you've been addressing yeah. that, Mr. Yeah. You know, I haven't been involved too much with the, the green, but disposal doesn't mean throw away. Disposal just takes it off of our asset list, our inventory list, and then we go through the board policy to secure as much as we possibly can for any of them, regardless of who is the top bidder, uh, which would include Craigslist, eBay, and uh, any type of green company that can come in, uh, certainly with computers and recycling. So disposal doesn't mean we throw them away. It, no, it means mean. that we just take them off the asset inventory list and then we try to get as much as possible. Have we done anything as far as the green? Yes, we're exploring it. Okay. Because I, I'm not sending an email that I got. I have it. No, and right. Is it all the prices for the different things? Yeah, I have it. I forwarded it over to our person who was responsible for okay. uh, moving such items. Okay. So we are in Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments? We'll call, please. Yes. 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 Yes.
Resolution N is to approve appointments for the NFA Progressive Academy, the tutorial program. Funding source is missing, but it's Title 1A. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Resolution O is to approve the provisions of the Supplemental Memorandum of Agreement regarding the implementation of the Annual Professional Performance Review executed by the District and the New York Supervisors and Administrators Association. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Resolution P is to approve the terms of and authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement between employee number 3766 and the New Bergen Large City School District. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levinson. Could I have a motion to table items P and Q to discuss in executive session before voting upon them? Roll call, please. Yes. The next resolution is Resolution R to create a full-time director of career readiness position. Funding source is the general fund. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. 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 Yes. Resolution S is to create a full-time director of elementary interdisciplinary curriculum and assessment. Funding source is the general fund. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. 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 Mr.
support for your service. As many of you know, as a former city of Newburgh councilwoman, I understand how rewarding your work can be, and also how difficult and thankless it can be, especially at tight budgetary times such as these. So I want to honor your work. Um, you know, it's not always how much money you have, but how you choose to spend it. I'm sometimes amazed at how some of our families will prioritize their spending. Some of our children are wearing only the most expensive, latest brands of clothing, for instance. However, if you ask your parents how much they are putting aside for their children's college funds, you will be met with a little more than blank stares. On the other hand, there are parents who choose to place money in their children's college funds and buy less expensive items instead. Here's an example of what I mean. Last year, I visited the Monroe Woodbury High School for a dance recital and was immediately struck by some important differences between there and here. Theirs is a very wealthy district compared to Newburgh. My guess is that their taxpayers earn many more times uh, more money than ours, and they pay higher school taxes as well. I don't think anyone would argue with that point. Anyway, when I walked into the auditorium, I was struck by the almost stark appearance of it. Their stage was phenomenal with all the latest uh, equipment, lighting, etc. But the floors were not carpeted. They were concrete. And the seats, although comfortable, were made of molded plastic without cushions so that they would last forever. We, on the other hand, with less overall resources, must spend the most. <laughs> with new fields and all of these expenditures that are just way out of line with our, you know, we, we're a pretty district, let's face it. We don't really have that much money. I don't understand why we are the only district around that does not value social work services. Poughkeepsie, with 4,600 kids, has five social workers. Beacon, with 3,700 children, has five social workers. Albany, with 8,700, have 21 social workers. Cornwall, with 3,400 students, have five social workers. On the other hand, Newburgh, with the website, indicates 11,300 students. We have less social workers now than any of the other districts. Could somebody please explain to me, and I know you can't respond, what sense does this make? Our district is in more need of social work services than any other, and we have less people employed. What, what is that all about? I don't get it. I, I, I really do not. I propose to you that this is a recipe for further decline in our district. So rather than spending a lot of money on, you know, really posh things and the most expensive sneakers and all of this other stuff, why are we not trying to create an environment where our kids are going to be able to flourish, maybe even get to college? I looked at Cornwall's list of colleges that their kids have been accepted to. It's like astounding. And we are just, I, I don't get it. The numbers that were read in terms of the Medicaid reimbursement is because you don't have social workers billing. No, all of this, only one of the social workers is allowed to bill at this point. If that program were up and running, Indeed, that $495,000 could be realized. Why would you choose to cheat these students with these severe socioeconomic issues? I'm not Thank you, Mrs. Bell. Thank you so much. 
I will uh, just speak in particular to the posh surroundings, as you described it. Uh, this auditorium, in particular, in the athletic fields that you spoke of, that is totally separate and apart from the general fund budget of this school district. Those were capital projects. They were public bond referendums that were voted upon by this community so that we might be able to provide these surroundings to our students. And they may be in a safe and pleasant environment and increase their ability to learn and to achieve. So I just want to be clear that that money for the upgrades that you see on our facilities is specifically separate and apart from the general fund budget. The next person I have listed to speak is Leith Stepakoff. Leith Stepakoff. Madam President and Board Members, over the past couple of months I've attended many of the Board meetings and budget workshops held at different locations in the school district. I've listened while cuts were proposed to important teaching positions, sports teams, and music programs in the elementary schools. Many speakers stood here to emphasize the importance of these programs and the teachers to the growth and development of the students in this district. Eventually, compromises were made, programs were trimmed, and budget goal was met. However, at the end of the day, the three sports teams that were eliminated, hockey, skiing, and crew, remained off the table. My daughter participated on the ski team for two seasons. It was a great experience for her, however, I understand why it was cut. The cost of skiing and the distance required to travel for practice made it a very difficult team to maintain. The NFA crew team, however, is a different story. The NFA crew team is probably one of the lowest per capita costs of all the teams at NFA. The majority of the equipment used by the NFA crew team was purchased with donations from the team's parents in the past. The team practices here in the city of Newburgh at a facility that was built from donations, grants, and hard work from these same parents who believe that NFA students should have the opportunity to participate in the sport. Personally, I do not understand the two reasons that were presented by the board for cutting the team. The first reason was, crew is not a recognized sport by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. Actually, neither is girls cheerleading. However, other than possibly the, the two freshman teams, I have not heard of any cuts to the other four girls cheerleading teams that are listed on the NFA Athletic District website. It is important also to note that on that same web page on the district website is a prominent photograph of the girls' eight boat early in the Hudson River. Yes, the school district should be proud that they have a girls' crew team this year. The second reason was crew has a club in the Newburgh Growing Club, so there is some place for these kids to go. Actually, all of the sports at NFA have a club system that allows the students to develop their skills early in life and practice their sport year-round. If NFA, NFA eliminated, eliminated all of their teams, kids would still be playing soccer, football, baseball, gymnastics, swimming, etc. But only those who could afford the high fees of these clubs would participate. Actually, the presence of these clubs make it very difficult for a student who has not been practicing their sports since the age of seven to participate at the high school level. Crew is one of the only sports that can take a high school student who has never previously participated in organized sports and turn them into an athlete who can compete at the college level. Crew is one of those programs that make the Newburgh school system special. Every school district has a baseball and football team, but how many have an award-winning solo car program, a nationally recognized debate team, and a crew team that consistently wins local, state, and even national competitions? If there is any money to be found in next year's budget, please consider keeping the crew team so that future NFA students will have the opportunity to row with the high school team on the Hudson River. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stepakoff. Ed Kennedy.
here because
um, give it to the board clerk, and this way um, the research and the areas where you would like us to review for getting the funding for this, we would certainly be happy to look at that. Well, um, it's, the thing is, we have to set up the foundation. Then the community has to get the funding from the community. So I'm willing to set up a non for profit organization within this community. I've already set up two. And then we just go out to this community and they show me, you just say, you know, how a college would go out and say, the graduates of the, we have an on tap source. Your graduates of this high school would be willing to start giving money back to this high school to give you money back to your community to help this high school, this community grow. The people know that there's a problem here. Okay, we'd be happy to discuss this with you um, at, a, at a future time um, and certainly something that the board will discuss in regards to the solution that you have, uh, the potential solution that you have provided to us. So we will discuss that and um, we will contact you about further discussion around this particular solution. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Sylvia Santiago. Good evening, my name is Sylvia Santiago. Her husband passed away. My own husband has a 
I've worked a full-time job in two years. Uh, a house is about to be condemned just around the corner. So this is just a quick picture of the community and the expenses. The, uh, the contracts that we currently have in place are not sustainable. So I ask for your due diligence while you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Santiago.
science specialist positions, teachers on special assignment. Um, subsequently, the board reinstated two positions for science specialists. So if I could just have Mr. Forget, our assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, explain that because there does seem to be some miscommunication out there in the community. I'll just reiterate what you just said. Um, what we did was we, the original re recommendation was to eliminate three science specialists. At the last meeting, we brought back two science specialists. Uh, the, the determination of where those specific positions will be uh, reinstated has not been determined yet. What we have to do at this point is to take a look at the different cuts and how they impact each of the buildings across the entire levels of uh, elementary, middle, and high. As you know, we lost the re-instructional coaches. We've got to balance the supports being provided to the teachers and the students within, within the program. Uh, so no determination has been uh, made at this point as to uh, where our positions were cut or when we were shifted. We have to have some very, very candid conversations. Thank you, Mr. Forge. Kathy Caldwell. Hi, I'm Kathy Caldwell. I'm a science specialist at Delta School. Um, based on what you just shared, um, I'm just going to, I have a letter to give to the, to the board, but I also, I won't go through the whole thing, but I'll, I'll share, seeing the decision wasn't made, why it really should not be Bill Gate. <laughs> Um, if it's the decision um, comes to fruition, um, that ends a 27-year magnet program at Bell's Gate School. Um, it also su it, it suggests that the future for Bell's Gate is being decided without any knowledge or participate participation from us. Um, that decision uh, leaves so many questions unanswered. Um, what are your plans for Valesgate School? What is its future? Uh, what theme can Valesgate School offer to parents who are required to choose schools for their children? What are your concerns about our incoming kindergarten parents who choose a school, our school because of its lab-based theme? Why are the decisions so secretive? We'll take that back because you said you haven't made a decision. Um, and why have we been called upon to help determine the future of our building? Uh, I, my question is also, how is that a community of learners? Is that how we behave? Um, each year, parents are required to select an elementary school for their children. While it's true that the emphasis on magnet themes has diminished over the years, this requirement still exists. It is no small matter for parents. The lab program at Bells Gate School now includes science, math, and technology, and it is our magnet theme. All 600 students from kindergarten through fifth grade in monolingual, bilingual, and self-contained classrooms experience all labs, not as a prep time for the teacher, but as an integral part of our, our academic day. Without the science lab, teacher, lab and its teacher, the Bells Gate School magnet theme collapses with nothing to replace it. The science club ends, the instructional support the science teacher provides classroom teachers for inquiry and exploration of the recently created nature trails go on. Without the science teacher, the classroom teachers will have no resource person to provide activity and materials for implementing the new core curriculum. With no magnet theme, what unique school-wide program do we show parents each year when they have to select schools for their children? Most of us know that the more popular cho school choices will still have, oh, I'll take that out, um, and so my question is, how does a less popular building, especially one without a theme, uh, fill it with students and parents? How do parents decide? How does a district-wide magnet program continue to function fairly when one of the schools has no theme? Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to um, hand those letters to Dr. Marie, then we'll be happy to give them to the board clerk. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Jack Caldwell. I'm Jack Caldwell, uh, retired Newburgh teacher and administrator. Uh, I 
was asked by the Bell's Gate staff to speak to you about the uh, position at Bell's Gate School that they believe, the school probably do believe, that it was uh, not reinstated. And they would like to give you some of the history which I can provide. Because they're also uh, almost sure that you really, really do not know Bell's Gate School as well as you need to. I hope you uh, recognize it is a 27-year history. It started in 1985, a year after Dewey Avenue started, and a few years before uh, Foster County School uh, position started also. So it's, it's been around a while, and it's a key, uh, key position to really consider. I now work at Black Rock Forest, and there's something that um, I've learned working with all of these scientists, that if you remove one, one species of anything, a tree, a worm, or anything from an environment, a whole lot of things start to collapse. A lot of things that start to collapse that you don't really know right now. And one, I, I mentioned that because when you remove the a science position from Bell's Gate School, you're removing 27 years of history, um, and you're not exactly sure what that is going to do. The impact of that is going to be something that you don't know yet. Kathy suggested a few, Janet suggested a few. I'd like to just give you some more of the history there. Back in 1999, Karen Warner won a tapestry grant for $10,000 for Bales Gate School. I won a $3,000 grant for Bales School from Black Rock Forest. Janet has gotten some money, she just told you, for Bales Gate School. The grant activity at Black Rock Forest has been around for quite a while. But Bales Gate School and FA are the only two schools in the whole district that are participating in a nationwide program called Trap the, Trap the Classroom. Uh, Bales Gate's been doing it for about three years, um, NFA for about two years. That's a very significant program with Black Rock Forest, which you guys are a member of and use quite a bit. Uh, with that, I, I, I find it kind of interesting to hear that there's a director of interdisciplinary curriculum. One piece of interdisciplinary disciplinary curriculum has to do with content. There are two key content areas when I was involved in developing that sort of stuff. Science and social studies. English, English language arts and math provided the skills so they could practice in an interdisciplinary curriculum unit. The content was science, the content was social studies. You start to eliminate that sort of thing, you're going to weaken the program at the Gate School in another way. Because that's part of its future, it seems, with the director of interdisciplinary curriculum at the elementary level. I, it's just still baffling uh, what, 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 what's going to happen here, and, and the end of it, it also speaks to a long history of having parents select a building, uh, and you're, 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 you're tearing it all apart from Bales Gate. Without that science lab, without the science specialist to run that science lab, the program ends. It is over. And parents that have already selected the building are coming into what? We don't know. And you're not going to be able to develop that in July and August. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. We don't have anyone else that's turned in papers, so Mr. Pacella, how much time do we have left in our 30 minutes to take other public comments? You know. Oh, yeah. So, so now we're into the second 30 from the beginning on agenda items. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on agenda items? Please step to one of the microphones and give your name and address. My name is Irene Scott Cathia and I'm a social worker with the Gate School. I would like to speak to the board concerning, or just adding to what Marge already said, but what I'd like to do is, I would like to just share some of the things that I do and I deal with my students on a week-to-week -week basis. And maybe some of you have heard, and maybe you have not heard, but although Bales Gate is an elementary school, it 
has a great deal of children that have a great deal of issues, personal issues. I, before coming to Valesgate, I worked with the suspension program, and I guess it was expected that a lot of these kids would have a lot of social issues. But upon arriving at Valesgate, one of the things that I dealt with last year was a nine-year-old girl that was living in the garage with her family, and it was 20 below zero, and they didn't have any heat. So I had to intervene and help this family find an apartment, find food, find clothing, and it was not a pretty sight to go into a garage where a little girl had to live with her family. And another incident, all these incidents that I'm gonna talk about happened at our school with our students. A young lady was molested by her father, and obviously she was traumatized, and just recently, as yesterday, I heard that she's still dealing with this issue. So PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome, it is very real, and our students go through a lot as elementary students. And also, I deal with a lot of children that are homeless, that are living in hotels, that are living in shelters, with no clothes, no adequate food, and no money. And their parents, unfortunately, are uneducated, and they don't know how to access proper resources. Also, we deal with children that have been beaten by their parents, severely beaten at times. Um, and of course, we have to report to CPS, but that also is very traumatizing to the children and very disheartening to myself as well. And we have children that, believe it or not, are exposed to people that deal with drugs. They know every kind of drug there is. They um, are actually a part of gangs. And some of the children have started having sex already. And this is very disheartening. And the reason I'm mentioning all this is because if you're gonna cut the social workers, as I said to Dr. Noriega, we have so many needs. You cannot expect our children to perform well. And there's, we constantly hear about student enrichment, but how? My question is how? If you can't meet the social needs, how can the children even learn? If you're hungry and you come to school and all we talk about is testing, 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 yes, academically, um, I agree. We do need that. I'm still in school myself, but at the same time, a child has to have a full stomach, a child has to feel safe, and a child has to know that the school has their best interests at heart. And now, I understand the budget, I understand all of that, but I also feel like there's money somewhere that can be found. I know you can't perform magic, but these kids need our help. So I'm asking you to consider, please, I also had a grandmother with 10 grandchildren. They're not even her children, but the mother died of four of them, the childhood. So the grandmother's trying to take care of all these children, but how? She doesn't really have a good education, so I try to help her as much as I can. Sometimes I go to Katona, to the psychiatric center there with one of our students. I didn't get home until 11.30 at night because the parent was illiterate. She didn't even know how to communicate well. She didn't know how to fill out an application, and her son needed help. So as far as I'm concerned, that's part of my job. I'm here to help the students. Of course, I also want to help the teachers because I feel like at Bill's Gate, I like it there. We're like a family. And I don't want to see us lose myself, a social worker, and also Kathy Caldwell, and there's other TAs that might be lost. We need your help so we can help our children. We always say it's about the children. But my question is, is it really about the children? Because if it's about the children and they're our future, then somebody has to do something. So I ask you to rethink everything. I know, again, it's about the money. I understand that. But it's about our children also because if we look at the condition of our children now, and they're our future, we're headed for a lot of treasure. Thank time. you. Thank you, Mrs. Scott Mathias. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm Miranda. Um, I don't do this, so I'm <laughs> just going to go. Take your time. Uh, I just wanted to say how, like, tell you what crew is to me, because you have all these teams at FA and other schools, and you call it a team, you know, but someone can just hop be a ball hog and all this stuff. But when you're at, like, the boathouse and, like, you join the crew team, you don't know, like, I didn't know what I was in for. I thought I was going to be by myself, 
and all this. And I came there and they welcomed me in and they took me in and they taught me. And um, it's just great because you can come in the team and be a novice, which is a new rower. And it's like, it's really like a family. Like, it's like being born into a family. Like, everyone welcomes you in and everyone brings you up and you're just being built up as a person. And I've seen people grow. Like, I've seen like someone come in and they just become a better person. You can watch this person grow. And when you're on this team, you can't do something by yourself. Nothing's done by yourself. Um, you, you can be in a boat by yourself, but you still need that person to help you get out and you need that person to carry your boat with you. No one does anything by themselves. It's all a team sport and no one leaves until everything's done. Not one person leaves until everything's done because everything's done together. And I just like, everyone's like, oh, like, what, what's so great about crew? Like, crew is my life. Like, and I've seen girls accomplish so much. And my friend, Jessica and Steph right here, they've set records for girls. And they work so hard. And like, I was injured over the winter, and my friends stand by me if I'm falling behind, and they push me. And we help each other build up, and because we are a family. And I just wanted to let you guys know what crew was to me, because that's what it is. And it's really family. And like my friend Jesse said before, we're part of that big family too. And a lot of people will be losing a lot of options in the future if we were gone. Thank you. Thank you, Miss McCoy. Okay, we have used all of our allotted time by adding the first 30 minutes, because we only have one speaker on agenda items, and all the speakers that have spoken this evening. So we are done for this evening with public comments. Please, I encourage you, um, if you have um, anything that you would like the board to review, please put it in writing and get it to Ms. Mary Lou Botsford, our district clerk, our board clerk, and we will be happy to review the information. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purposes. To discuss collective negotiations under the Taylor Law and the employment history of particular individuals. The board may take further action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Roll call, please. Thank you all very much for being here and thank you for your input. We need a resolution to remove from the table resolutions P and Q. And I have a resolution to remove from the table resolutions P and Q. So moved. Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. 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 Resolution P is to approve the terms of and authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement between employee number 3766 and the New Bergen Lower City School District. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Levinstein? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokash? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Resolution Q is to approve the terms of and authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement between employee number 8640 and the New Urban Large City School District. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levin? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Protash? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Wedmall? Yes. Ms. Wichek? Yes. I have a motion to adjourn. So we All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you very much.